Hello again, and welcome to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My name is Hobo Tom, and well, my girlfriend's not here, but she's seen episodes, and I've used some pretty bad words, so I feel shame. Apologize for my language on past shows. I'm sorry. But with that out of the way, I do love my, and respect my girlfriend a lot. Um, she's right now, she has an interview tomorrow. It's more than I have. I have to go grocery shopping. My cat ate all of her food, and I don't care if I go hungry. I'll be darned if my kitty cat goes hungry. She'll probably show up. She's kind of wandering in the house. Well, let's talk about SmackDown. Again, thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Let me get my desk somewhat organized. A nice fizzy root beer. I need, I need my little sugar. Great Valley root beer. Root beer of champions. So I'm probably not going fishing tomorrow. I have, I'm busy for some reason. Except for Friday. I don't know. Well, let's talk about SmackDown. Um, it, it, was a, it was a good show. Again, all go-home shows are kind of weird. Mainly because there's a lot of promos, a lot of recaps. But again, with SmackDown, they, they did show a lot of wrestling and advanced a lot of stories. So it was fun. It was fun. So much better than Raw. And I don't know if it's because it's a two-hour show versus a three-hour show. It's just better for some reason. Let's jump right in. Um, SmackDown start off at, um, again, today's 9-11. So again, they had a nice little ten ball salute, and they showed kind of an image of the old Twin Towers. I think I was in New York two years after that happened. I know it was a year. I know they lost power. I think like a month before I moved to New York. So I was there for two years. I saw the site. And just kind of moved on. Saw other interesting city too. Naked people in the streets. Actually, I missed that. But so much for that. Uh, Jeff Hardy comes out, gives a promo. Please, Jeff. Please don't die on Sunday. Don't do anything that you will want to do at Hell in a Cell. We all know what he wants to do. Please don't do that. And let's start off with a Jeff Hardy versus Shinsuke Nakamura match. It was pretty good. Uh, Shinsuke kind of does the typical heel champion, slow start. He gets in and out of the ring a lot. Again, really just more so to frustrate Jeff Hardy. And once the kind of the match starts in earnest, uh, Jeff Hardy is really good. He's good in the ring. He's good out of the ring. Uh, Shinsuke is, again, a very classical striker. Again, strong style. And eventually, Jeff Hardy does get the upper hand again. And through, through wrestling, and again, the classic Jeff Hardy moves. Uh, Randy Orton comes out, ropes. Ropes or corners or whatever they call it. He shoved them off the top rope, crotched them on the top rope. Very careful. Don't pull a groin. And do not do that on top of a steel cage. The Sunday. That would be bad. Uh, and then, of course, Orton gets a little bit of his comeuppance. Um, so, well, Jeff Hardy overall wins. And for the most part, this was a good, solid cheeseburger match. Oh, also, tomorrow, probably tomorrow in the later afternoon, I have a special guest hosting the Hobo and His Girlfriend show. Dr. Tom's coming back. Dr. Keller will be here on the phone with my girlfriend to discuss predictions on Hell in a Cell. Something else I have to do tomorrow morning, too. 
Wow, I'm busy. Probably have to make the match card. Yes, because I will be live streaming. Hopefully, I'll be able to get some of the pre-show and and the main show. All depends when I work on Sunday. I think I open up Sunday morning. All depends how tired I feel. I, sometimes when I come home from work, I do take a nap. But do not take a nap for this. Eventually, one day, there's going to be some Southern Pro Lucha Libre coming here today. To Little quick, quick shout out there, and and maybe a go wrestling show sometime in October ish, maybe November. We'll see. Um. So again, Jeff Hardy wins. Well, well, Jeff Hardy wins because well, Shinsuke Nakamura more so loses due to outside interference. So he retains his U.S. Championship. I don't think they have Shinsuke in the match. They don't have the U.S. belt, which is, I mean, ha has been in the past on par. Where they always have forgotten one championship belt, especially the minor cards, but I think Shinsuke is a bigger star than that. Maybe they just want to give him a little time off. And I know he does have pretty strong matches, pretty physical matches. Maybe he's like, hey, this is like the one thing I can take off. Give them some time off. And I know the wrestlers, especially in WWE, they have a very grueling work schedule. Granted, they get paid a lot. And I mean, the treatment, especially if you're on the the upper cards, are really good. So I don't want to kind of poo-poo them too much. But again, it is rather physical. I think they do work about 250 days out of the year. So again, they do need off. They need, they need time to rest and recover. And then you have uh, Miz and Maurice. They're the best. I just want to watch them awkward, awkwardly make out on a table again. That was so good for for talking smack. And then you have AJ Styles gives an empty ring promo. He really looks distraught. He looks like he's going to commit murder against Samoa Joe. We'll talk about Sonja later. Then you have a Charlotte Flair versus Sonya Deville match. And you can kind of tell that Flair wasn't taking the match seriously, mainly because she saw the, the, the T-shirt on. It's odd. When you see wrestlers wear the T-shirt, you know, it's like, okay, this, this match is a, a breeze. I know what's happening. Uh, Sonya Deville came out in black as a heel. Mandy Rose was black, too. I don't know why. Maybe they're more color coordinated. I know when they had their little like picture and picture image, they had them in their kind of rainbow, white and rainbow outfit, which for some reason looks looks better. I know, just from every so often viewing inst the Instagram posts, Sonya Deville does look a lot cuter without makeup. Makeup, and I know they do it for a whole bunch of reasons for lighting and effects and just to look just to look the look look look, look the character. But she looks cuter without the makeup. I think once they also really overdid Becky Lynch's makeup. And it looked like she had like plastic face going on. I don't know. That's my own little thing. Um, but for the most part, I mean, it was a good match. I mean, Sonya Deville, she's still kind of not super smooth. I haven't, I haven't seen her wrestle on SmackDown in a while. I don't know what she's been doing house show-wise, so, so that could always be it. Hey, one of those things, when you're in the ring and you do it all the time, you look perfect. You get some time off, and you just, you just get a little rust. So a couple things, and, and really minor stuff. Just I think some footwork. Just look kind of off. Just some small timing issues. I mean, nothing major, at least. Um, again, Flair is good, and she can carry a match. I mean, she's been around. I mean, her dad's Ric Flair. He probably taught her every every dirty trick and every trick in the book. Um, and it was a good match. It was a cheeseburger match. Charlotte Flair won. And as she's going down the crowd, she, she's letting people take selfies of her. 
And then she gets attacked by a fan in the crowd. It's Becky Lynch wearing a wig. Evil Becky is so hot. Just want to... Oh. Can't do that on YouTube. But again, Evil Becky is so good. Again, just to read this was a really good match. It was a... And, and especially with Becky Lynch getting involved, it kind of really elevated it. And again, it brought it really up from, say, that ham's, that good grilled ham and cheese sandwich. And now this was a solid cheeseburger match. Again, we'll have Dr. Keller talk about the math of it. That's the only thing I'm kind of worried about. And then you have story time with Samoa Joe. That was a great Dr. Zeus moment. S someone in their video editing department obviously knows what they're doing. That was good. Then you have the bar, 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 bar of Seamus and Cesaro, or Cesaro and Seamus, as they're always announced, versus it's Rusev Day. And I just have to say, Indian Lynch is so much better at singing than rapping. He should never rap again. And this was, this was a really good match. It was fun. Um, the New Day was on commentary. They do a great job. They have a future, either all three of them or individually, as a commentating crew. They're that good. They're entertaining. Biggie was, like, making pancakes. I know it was like pancake mix and eggs, I think he had. And I think at one point he said, who wants eggshells in their pancakes? And Corey Graves. <laughs> it's funny. It was something about pancake mix. It's like, it's like, well, how do you make your pancakes? Well, I use a pancake mix. What, what do you expect me to use? And again, it was good. Back and forth in that. The SmackDown commentary team is so good. They, they gel together. It's almost, you have Corey Graves as the heel. Then you have, oh, what's his face? Hmm. Oh, it is one in the morning. Uh, it's kind of a face commentary, and, and, then, and then Tom Phillips, again, is the moderator between them. Tom Phillips is actually really good, too. I know he was on NXT for the longest time. He, he deserved it. One big swig, thick, thick and flavorful. That's the way Rupert should be. And it was really fun, though. I mean, the New Day, again, great in commentary. Graves is funny. Again, I don't know why he doesn't like pancakes. French toast is probably my go to. The pancakes are up there. Though. I don't think I've had pancakes in a while either. One of my favorite breakfasts is little sausage gravy, though, and biscuits, especially the stuff I make. It's a whole thing between my girlfriend and I. We'll show it later. Um, but again, this was a really fun match. I mean, the only thing that brought it down is that there wasn't really a lot of classic tag team works. If you watch tag teams like The Revival, um, the Bludgeon Brothers, to some degree. Authors of Pain, or any of the Usos, New Day. I mean, the the bar doesn't do a lot of classic tag team double teams. Neither does Rusev's Day, but Rusev did use Aiden English as a weapon. That was pretty cool. I think somehow both... Uh, why do I want to say Cesaro? Or is it? Yes. Seamus and Cesaro wound up on one side. For some reason, I want to call Seamus something else. I always have to stop myself. Oh, I know. It says Kazarian. Why do I want to call Cesaro Kazarian? I don't know. It's just getting late, folks. And they were both outside the ring. <laughs> Aiden English runs off the ropes. 
Rusev gives him a back body drop outside of the ring, falls on those two. So it was good. Yeah, it's always fun when when the bigger brute guy uses the other uh, uses the other small guy as a weapon. Again, it goes along with it, like classic styles. Again, in any tag team, again you have the big the big bruiser guy, and then and then you have the little skinny fast guy. And the big guy tends to use the smaller guy as a weapon. It, it, it's just fun. Um, again, this was a fun man. Aiden English eats a bro kick. I mean, a lot of good back and forth. A lot of good spots, a lot of false finishes. Aiden English shoves Rusev out of the way, eats a bro kick. In turn, Rusev gives Seamus the Machka kick. And it's going to be Rusev Day versus the New Day at Hell in a Cell. Yeah, this was actually a really fun, enjoyable match. This was a this was really the surf and turf quality match of the evening. You know, overall, it was a really good. It was a the wrestling matches were good. Then you have R-Truth versus Almas. R-Truth still has the moves. R-Truth does come out with Carmella. Um, I don't know what I'm going to be doing on Tuesday. Tuesday, I think I close. So I may do some live streaming. Be very careful because that's what got me my first 90-day suspension. Was that I tried to show the Mix Max challenge. So I can't do that. But I figure out ways semi around that. I just can play the volume and have it minimized down there somewhere. So when big things happen, I can kind of say, oh, and just kind of move my bar over. And I think it's such a small square where WWE sensors can't actually figure out what it is. So I might be doing that. So, wow, that's going to be two live streams. So again, you have R Truth and Carmella are going to be in the Mix Max Challenge, and I think they're facing Andrade, Cien Almas, and Selena Vega. Selena Vega is tiny still. I just can't believe how short she is. She's skinny too, so it doesn't look weird. And it's just so weird. Almas, I don't think is Almas. I think is like just a normal like five eleven or six foot. I mean, it's, not, it's not like Amos is tall. Again, our truth still has the like, moves. This was actually a really good, fun cheeseburger match. Um, kind of Andrade. He just works stiff. I don't know if if it's because of his Lucha Underground or his time with New Japan. He, he kicks people, and it's like, ooh. He did a backflip kick to the back of the neck. It looked, that, that looked like he took out R-Truth's bad shoulder. I think R-Truth had a broken collarbone twice. That's kind of where the foot landed. Ew. Um, so again, of course, there's you always have the Tranquilo pose. In the ropes, and then Selena Vega does that on the bottom. Carmella pulls out. Selena Vega again causes a distraction for R Truth. R Truth tries for a roll up. Almas reverses that into his own roll up with a handful of tights, or handful of pants, I guess. It's hard to call it tights if it has a belt and looks like jeans. And again, a fun cheese ring match. Andrade C and Almas wins. Then we have an Oscar promo. And part of me dislikes what they're doing with Asuka. Part of me says at least they're using Asuka. Asuka now is a little bit more of a comedy role where she can't understand English that well. And she's there with Naomi. And maybe this is setting up for the evolution for the women's tag team champion. Maybe these will be a team. Because I know half of Asuka hair is like glowy green. The other is like fluorescent pink. And Naomi is just just glow. They could be team half and half glow, I guess. 
I don't know. But it was fun, though. And then, kind of the last match, you had Maurice versus Brie Bella. And I hate to say it, I've never been a fan of Brie Bella. I've never been a fan of the Bell Twins. If it wasn't for The Miz, I probably would have been a lot meaner about this match. Um, really, the big thing is Maurice tries to frustrate Brie by going out of the ring all the time. Brie calls Maurice a coward. Miz gets on the mic. My wife is better than this. I'm going to go make out with her on a table in the back, awkwardly, in front of Renee Young. <laughs> that last part. That was from Talking Smack, but that was still, a, still one of the best moments about Talking Smack. I actually missed that. But they start heading out. We don't need this. This crowd doesn't, this crowd doesn't deserve us. All, all, in, all in normal heel antics. And then, of course, Bree pulls Maurice back into the ring. Maurice kicks her, gets a two count. Bree then goes for the yes lock. Miz pulls Bree out. Daniel Bryan gets involved. Match is thrown out. Bella wins because she got pulled out by the Miz. Miz just gets punched by Bree Bella after trying to dodge it from Daniel Bryan. And that's how the show ends. I mean, this was really... If it wasn't for The Miz being The Miz, it would have been worse. This is your ham sandwich match. And that was SmackDown, really, in a nutshell. Um, and some programming notes. Wednesday, going to see Dr. Keller here with my girlfriend for Hell in a Cell predictions. Probably Friday night will be my Lucha Underground show. Friday or Saturday. Sunday, I do plan to have another live stream for Hell in a Cell. And then probably Tuesday, I'll do definitely a live stream for the Mix Mat Challenge. Again, I'll have the normal Raw and SmackDown show. And probably on Saturday, I'll have... I do plan to go to NXT in Sanford. I do plan to get some videos and some commentary on that. Then Sunday, it'll probably be Lucha Underground. Kind of similar to the way this was heard. And I would like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Uh, you can also email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night or morning, whenever this gets up.